Hello everyone. This is Spoiler Lab. Today we will talk about the action comedy fantasy film of 2018 called Slaughterhouse Rules. In the beginning, we see a commercial for an elite British boarding school called Slaughterhouse. The main character, a guy named Donald Wallace or just Don, is surprised by the video that was turned on by his mother and notes that the school has a very strange name. The mother also hands a printed pamphlet to her son, saying that she visited this place yesterday and it made an unforgettable impression on her. According to her, there is one place available, which happens extremely rarely. Therefore, Don has a great chance to get into the educational institution that graduates future politicians, spies and stars of show business. The guy doesn't share his mother's enthusiasm, but the mother insistently advises her son to stop playing video games, sleeping until dinner, and behaving like a child. It's time to finally become serious and take care of his future, so that his late father could be proud of him. Donald is skeptical when he turns over the pages, but his attention is attracted by a photo of a beautiful girl. The mother joyfully points out that there are not just guys there, but also a lot of pretty girls. The son is unconvinced, but the mother says that it is all settled, since she has paid for a year up front. The first day of school is chaotic. The parents bring the kids back after the holidays, and they settle down in the dormitories. Those who are younger cry and whine, while the older students kiss and drink alcohol. Don is slightly nervous, but the mother promises that he will like it there. A teacher named Meredith Hausman takes Don to the bedroom where he is to live with a slob, Will Blake. Don's mother notices a label on the door that says some Viscount Seymour used to live here. The teacher awkwardly explains that, unfortunately the lad is no longer with them and then scolds Will for not taking off the label. The mother and the teacher step aside and the school announces that an assembly is to take place. Confused Don wanders around the crowd of students and suddenly notices the pretty girl from the pamphlet. He pretends that she has dropped her painting and tries to introduce himself to her. The girl guesses right away that he is new since he is at Andromeda, the girl's territory. According to her, Everyone must be exclusively in their own zone. Xenophon is the territory of nerds and erudites. Olympus is a place for rugby players and athletes, while Sparta is something like a base for losers and slobs. His neighbor Will waves at him from over there and invites to join him. Donald thanks the girl and unwillingly walks to his place. On his way there, he comes across a local leader named Matthew Clagg. He scolds Donald for talking to a senior. Will advises Don not to make Clagg angry in the future since he is from a dynasty of military criminals. In the meanwhile, a head boy makes a speech before the students. He explains certain rules about how it is forbidden to swim in the local waters and enter the woods. Suddenly, a school headmaster appears, surrounded by a retinue, and a small dog. He makes a pretentious speech that ends with the words through slaughter to the stars, through bloodshed to immortality. The school motto is as weird as its name. Everyone greets the headmaster, but the conservationists suddenly rush into the hall. One of them demands the headmaster stops the gas production at the territory, since this may lead to an environmental catastrophe. Matthew grabs this hippie, takes him outside, and starts beating him up. The headmaster apologizes and explains that there are large deposits of shale gas on their land. By allowing to produce it, the school can earn good money and improve the infrastructure significantly. Meanwhile, Meredith jogs in the woods. Suddenly, he encounters a huge gas rig. Having come closer, the teacher meets a group of scientists who advise him not to poke and return to the school. Meredith runs away, and a sinkhole appears right behind him. Having returned, he meets the headmaster who recommends him not to run in the woods and sympathizes with Audrey's departure, who was Meredith's love. The scientists look into that huge sinkhole and come to the conclusion that this happened due to many caves being underground. Additionally, seismic data indicate the presence of a huge amount of gas, but they also notice some mysterious movement deep underground. Meanwhile, Meredith video chats with his beloved. Beautiful Audrey had to leave the nurse's position in the school, and travel to one of the African countries on a voluntary mission. Tipsy Meredith asks her to come back, and if not, he will come over. But Audrey is clearly not interested and lets him know that she is very busy. In the meantime, Don Will and the other lads talk nicely in their bedroom, but the Sparta group is suddenly summoned. Meredith scolds them for a bad prank with a noose tie hanging in a bathroom. Will explains to Don, that all this fuss is about the guy, Viscount Seymour, who lived in his place and hanged himself in the toilet with his own tie last term. Don is very bored the next day during a lesson. He looks out the window, sees that pretty girl and waves at her, but this is spotted by the seniors. Don asks Will about the girl during a break and finds out that her name is Clemcy Lawrence and that she is a goddess. According to him, Don shouldn't even try to hit on her. Don has his nose hit by a ball right away and starts bleeding. The seniors laugh, saying it was an accident. Back in the bedroom, Will tries to explain the school hierarchy to Don. Beautiful Clemcy, alongside other seniors, are gods, who live in heaven and participate in orgies, while others like themselves are ordinary dogs, living in hell. But Don doesn't agree, since he fell in love, and he is rights. But the other guys just make fun of him. 
At this moment, angry Matthew enters the room and wonders what they are doing. The nurse, who replaced Audrey, appears out of nowhere and tells Matthew that the newcomer tried to hit on Clemsey. Enraged Matthew announces that they are all punished and will wake up at 5 in the morning all week. The morning jogging session along the fields and swamps goes well and ends with the punished guys being on the ground, attempting to catch their breath. Will cannot get up, and Don helps him. Having decided to take a short cut and run through the woods, they come across a huge sinkhole in the ground. In order to check the depth of the hole, the guys drop a wood stick in there, which simply disappears into the abyss. Will lights a cigarette and notices that the lighter has a green flame. Don takes it away from him, reminding that the gas is all around. They run further and end up in the camp of stone conservationists, who immediately offer them to buy drugs. But the guys tell them about the sinkhole. The leader of the conservationists, named Woody Chapman, explains that this hole leads to hell. Earth has been abused and now it takes its revenge. Don has trouble sleeping that night and accidentally ends up in a basement where he finds a tombstone of some Teddy Chapman, who went missing back in 1988. Meanwhile, Will makes another joke with a tie right in front of Matthew Clagg's room. D.N. calls his mother the next morning and whines about his problems and his desire to get the hell out of there. This is when Clemsey and her friend knock on the phone booth. As soon as Don sees her, he gets it together and tells his mother that it is all fine. The girls say that they are going to the smoking spot, but they have no lighter. Don discovers Will's lighter in the pocket, and they go there together. During the cigarette break, Don asks Clemsey about the lad who killed himself. The girl says that he was gay, and Matthew picked on him with some other guy quite a lot, also telling his parents about this. Will joins them, but the smoking spot is suddenly attacked by Matthew and the other seniors. With the use of the firecrackers, they force Don and Will to the pond. They throw a firecracker again on the shore, but the guys throw it further into the water. The water ignites, blasting everything around. The guilty ones gather in the headmaster's office, who claims it to be a normal methane leak. But the smokers are also to blame. Therefore, they will be punished by not going home this weekend. Meanwhile, Clemsey's brother asks her not to talk to Will or Don. According to him, he is about to become God and must go through a rite of passage. And everyone laughs at him because of her. In the meantime, Will teaches Don that it is not necessary to smoke the tobacco, it can also be smelled. Clemsey's friend passes by and cheers Don by saying that his beloved will stay at school over the weekend as well. But Will asks Don to forget about her. In turn, Don blames Will for letting his neighbor kill himself. The guys quarrel and Don also notices some guy hugging Clemsey. It is very boring at school over the weekend, and Will decides to get drunk and kill himself. He sticks his head into the noose, while also intending to shoot himself. But then Don comes in and knocks his neighbor to the floor. Will falls, blaming Don ironically for nearly killing him. The teacher also gets drunk, since his darling Audrey announces that she found someone else. The earthquake begins at that moment, and the light disappears everywhere. Matthew gathers all those remaining and starts a roll call. Meanwhile, the gasmen notice some beasts crawling out of the sinkhole. The unknown creatures attack the workers, and then the camp of the stone conservationists. Matthew discovers Will and Don's secret room while making his nightly round. He sees a whole bunch of ties in there and screams out in anger. Meanwhile, the guys wander around the basement and Don says that the leader of the conservationists is a graduate of their school, named Woody Chapman. Will says that he knows about him. His younger brother Teddy Chapman once disappeared in the local catacombs. All of a sudden, they come across Clemsey with her friend and they walk up to the woods together. They discover a small bizarre creature there, which rapidly attacks Clemsey and gets into her shirt. The girl panicky takes off almost all her clothes and kills the creature by hitting it against a tree log. Having returned to the school, they show the killed beast to the headmaster and ask to call the police. The headmaster tries to convince the guys that this is an inner matter, and they order to take them away from there. They tell the headmaster that Woody told them everything about him and his deal with the gasman. The headmaster calls Woody a madman since they studied together here back in 1988. Even back then Woody was certain that some sort of devil lived underground, and he lost his brother in the catacombs because of this. While they are arguing, the dog and the nurse notice a weird creature by the window, that devours the woman. Everyone runs out into the yard in panic, jumps into a car, moves backwards and it seems to them that they have run over a dog. The frustrated headmaster comes out to check and is suddenly killed by the clutches of the creature. The beast attacks the car, the guy kills the creature and intends to drive away. But Clemsey remembers about the brother and asks to come back after him. Don is excited to realize that the guy, who was hugging her, was her brother, and joyfully agrees to save him. Once on the shore, the guys discover an orgy of her brother's initiation into the gods. The brother is tied, drunk and, what is more, he is being beaten with a whip. The seniors are having fun around him, drinking, and having sex. Don runs to save Clemsey's brother all on his own. He frees him, but the seniors tie up Don instead and start whipping him. The beasts attack the party at that moment. Everyone flees in panic and then the confused teacher appears. 
One of the creatures attacks him but he miraculously kills it. The guys and the teacher hide in the basement and discuss the possible number of these creatures. Meredith remembers that there is the cadet corps with weapons. Matthew appears while they are getting equipped, he is very angry at Will for his jokes. The teacher tries to calm him down, but Matthew shoots him, seriously wounding him. After that, he suggests they let Will and Don be torn to pieces so that the others can escape. This is when the teacher receives a call and Don attacks Matthew. While Meredith sends an SOS signal, Matthew overpowers Don, but one junior student shoots him in the neck. Wounded, Matthew retreats to the window, where the creatures attack him and drag him with them. The teacher tries to help Matthew, but he is also dragged away. The guys decide to find shelter in the underground tunnels, but they soon realize that these tunnels were once dug by these creatures. That is, they are trying to hide from the creatures on their own territory. The guys come across Woody in the tunnels, who says he had long guessed about the creatures, and he and his brother tried to blow everything up here. They notice one of the creatures then and, assuming they fear the light, Woody tries to tame the creature with a flashlight. But clearly, the idea was not the best, and Woody dies. The guys make their way through the tunnels and find the main lair of creatures where a large number of them reside. They try to run away, but the creatures pursue them stubbornly. The guys manage to find a way out at the last moment, and they throw a lighter into the tunnel that is filled with gas. The air ignites, so the creatures die, and everything around them blows up spectacularly, including the old building of the slaughterhouse school. Having observed the magnificent fireworks, the happy guys get up with the last ounce of their strength and go away. In the meanwhile, the late headmaster's dog finds the teacher alive in the woods and joyfully licks the blood off him. Thanks to everyone for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss our next video. See you soon.